Welcome everyone. With the new patch 1.1 coming in less than 3 days, there's a number of things I want to look at and I want to remind you guys which are on countdown right now. So patch 1.0 will finish and there's a few things you really should consider. Coming over to the notes over here, you can see that I have listed 10 things which you consider. Some of those things do have a timer to expire like the battle pass, the test runs for the rewards and also the limited banners. Other things you should also consider if you still want to take advantage of the patch 1.0 rerolling or maybe preparing for some of the resource for patch 1.1 and also have a good understanding of the new reputation system, prepare for it and choose wisely with the reputation task for limited 3 a week. Finally, we'll look at why it's very important to not overspend your money during the new unit hype and during the new patch hype. Coming over to the game here, you can see that our battle pass will be expiring very soon, in less than 20 hours. This is for Asian server, it may be a little different across different regions. Knowing that there is only 20 hours left with the battle pass system, there's a few questions I often get asked. Which battle pass weapon should I pick? And also, is it worth it if I don't get to battle pass level 50, is it worth it for me to you know, still buy the battle pass? Because I might not get all the rewards. I even summarized the rewards over here on this video. If you want more detailed guide on which battle pass weapon is the best, do come to this one. But what my recommendation was, I went for the one-handed sword, I went for the catalyst, I went for the bow. I think those three are the top tier ones. And to answer the question, when should you buy the battle pass when it's about to expire? I will recommend buying at level 50 of course, but after that, if you can get anywhere after level 45, it still can be worth it. It's okay maybe at level 40, but I wouldn't recommend just buying at level 30 or 35. That's just personal preference. But nevertheless, you still get a battle pass weapon at level 30. So it still can be worth it if you really want the weapon. The resource and the amount of you know rewards collected will vary between your battle pass level. You can see over here the total rewards are those summarized in the video. So come back to the video if you want more, more details. You can see you're pretty much looking at if you buy it at level 35, you're looking at almost only 60% of the rewards. Keep that in mind. You can also see that I have not picking some of my boxes, and it's very important we pick those. The reason I haven't been picking those is because I wasn't sure if I wanted which book for which character, because those were for the level 7, 8 upgrades. And something I want to remind you guys is, if you come back to the last video we posted, we can see that Zhongli needs gold, and also Child needs his freedom. It's very likely Child will be the first banner character and Zoni will come in 20 days after. So if I was thinking of planning for Child, what I can do is I can start to save for some of those freedom books. And if you come over here, you can see this one does have freedom, which is 5. Klee also uses those as well. After that, you can see the rest of those, this is the gold over here. So if you're thinking of saving for Zoni and Child, you can pick those books this way. Similarly, if you go to your characters and start considering what they're needing, so let's say if I really wanted my Jin to be leveling up for another high level, I can consider the resistance for Jin. So there's a few choices, but the most important thing, guys, is to pick them before the battle pass expires. If there is any reward on battle pass that is not collected, I'm not sure if we can still collect them. So make sure you pick those. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news, and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Similar to the Battle Pass, there is another reward you should be aware of. I'm not sure if you guys have collected them. So there's 20 Primal Gems, there is 6 Experience Books, there's also 3 of the Weapon Enhanced Materials. So those are the trial runs, and they will expire in less than 11 hours from the Asian server. It's likely to be around 15-20 hours across different servers, but make sure you grab those, because those are free resource. And of course, if we go to the wish system, you can see that the Klee banner will expire in about 1 day and 8 hours for me, and similarly the weapon banner will expire. If you're looking for a particular character, or if you're just trying to build up for your I guess the 75 before the hyper rate boost. So before those, if you're looking for a particular character, if you're looking for a particular weapon, make sure that we remember that those banners, the Klee banner and the weapon banner, will expire at least one or two days before the new patch comes in. So you can't just log in half hour before the new patch, use those banners and then go to the new, new patch banners. So those banners will have a different gap with one or two days. So be aware of that. When we get patch 1.1, we'll lose a lot of rewards from patch 1.0. 
This includes over 30 limited banner draws and also the clear rewards. So if you haven't seen this rerolling guide, I want you guys, you know, be aware of this. You lose a lot of rewards after patch 1.1 comes in. So if you want to reroll, if you want to go for a guide, definitely try this one. It takes about 30 minutes and you get about 30 limited banner rolls to prepare you for the new patch and maybe just get a new account to try them out, see if you get lucky with the new characters. But once the new patch comes in, the rewards will be disappearing and we will not be getting those generous rolls on the new characters. With the release of patch 1.1, there's likely and, you know, pretty much confirmed to have some of the new geo shield weapons. If you're not sure what those are for and how to farm weapon experience, come over to this video, which will talk about the stats, the things in detail, and I talk about which character can make use of them. And similarly, you can prepare your character's resource with how much of the essential material, what do they need, and also we look at how much of the moral cost and how much reason and how to get more artifacts. So we had some detailed calculation over here. If you haven't seen that, this is the previous video before this one. And there's a lot of good info if you want to prepare for any character. Why do I say any character instead of just child or, you know, zombie? Is I want to prepare you guys to remember that we should be happy if we get something new. If you just aim for one particular character, if you don't get it, you might be a little disappointed. And that's what we want to avoid because this can lead to overspending. Now, I'm sure most of you know there is going to be a condensed reason system, which gives you double reward for each of the runs for the 20 reason runs. And this will be costing us to have one call fly each. And in order to collect a lot of call flies to save your time when a patch comes in, so I'll show you guys a few locations. Firstly, you need to make sure your account is set to nighttime, and this will be for the animal call flies. Come to Windrise, this is the first location. What you're going to see is you're going to see you know, five or six of the call flies. Usually you don't need that many, but it's good that you know where to collect them. You can see this one there. There's about five or six. If you go out on trade, there's a definitely a lot more. And what you want to do is you want to sprint towards them and jump bird. It's pretty straightforward and they do respawn every day. After that, come to the next statue of the seven over here next to the winery. And this one you have to be a little faster because it will fly away the moment you get here. This is one here. Oh, see, you don't want to click on the statue like me. Now they flew away. So back there, there was five or six of those. Over here, there's about two to three of those. After getting your fair share of the animal ones, what I recommend is come to the geo ones. Keep in mind guys, they all give the same call fly. And here we're coming to the domain of Garing over here. So we're going for the geo flies now. We can collect about, you know, 15 to 20 a day if you're vigilant, but there isn't that much need for this much. We don't have the reason. So here you're looking at at least five or six. Look up, look down. It's about five or six over here. If you come down here again, I can be collecting them of course. If you come down here, there's one hiding over there. You just have to float over. So there's six more over here. And finally, there is one more location. If we come to the hidden palace over here with the dungeon, you can find a few more of the geoflies. So the first location usually have five or six, the second one usually have two to three. In total, we're looking at at least 12, you know, 15, or sometimes even 20, if you are more vigilant and quicker. So they are a little more hidden here. Small lizard. <laughs> Let me try to grab the lizard. So what you want to do is, so you can't see anything over here, but if you come to this cave, which usually have a few of those, you can see there's a few just floating here. Make sure you don't cast any spells, because they will be destroyed if you cast any spells. There's also a mining location over here, which is a very nice generous mine as well. So there we have it, a quick and straightforward way to get about 10 to 20 of the core flies to prepare you guys for the condensed reason that's coming in patch 1.1. Next up, we're looking at the new reputation system for patch 1.1. If you haven't seen the previous video, we talk about the fastest ways for reputation levels, what are the things we should focus on most to unlock, and you can see in the video, I've highlighted from the live stream what's the importance of the leveling for each of the levels, we calculated and estimated those, and also the biggest thing is there's a limitation of how many bounties and weekly tasks you can do across both cities, so they total together. Make sure you do check this video out, I explain things in detail. Just as a summary guys, if you're doing the 60, 80, and 100 in one city, you can't do those in the other city. So the best balance is probably 80, 100, and 100 to maximize your earning of experience for the reputation per week. Now, most of us know that with the new reputation system, you are getting a lot of food recipes. And what I want to remind you guys is we can start to prepare some of those food, especially the processed food. So what I mean by that is, if we come to any of the cook locations, what you, I want to show you guys is I have spent maybe two to three hours ahead of this particular recording to prepare my processed food. 
you'd be surprised guys, the processed food that is required in the game takes a long time. And if I come over here, if you click this tab, you can see that I prepared about 56 of the flour, you know, ham, I prepared a few of the, those items. I haven't looted them, I'm waiting for patch 1.1 to loot them, just to save some inventory, which we don't really need that much. But notice I've processed a lot of food. Those food would have taken me 2-3 to three hours to process. Just something a little ahead of time, in case I get new recipes and new things. I want to have those processed food ready to cook things, and also, you know, I don't have to wait the time when it comes to cooking. Now the final item on my checklist is to remind myself and everybody else that we don't want to overspend with the new units and new patch 1.1 hype. Because what's going to happen is, again, you're going to see Reddit posts, YouTube videos, a lot of you know, streamers on Twitch or anywhere else, different platform, they'll be promoting a lot of spending as usual, because that's what drives views and that's what people love to see. Spent in moderation, consider your financial circumstances, you know, it's the you know, currently with a virus around, not everyone have the money or the resource to spend this much in the game. And remind yourself, any units can be okay if you get a 4 star like Donna, if you get Bidu, if you get Nagon, any of the units can work. So you don't have to get a 5 star to just enjoy the game. I've seen comments saying I'll quit or make or spend more money in it if I don't get a 5 stars. If you start with this mindset, what's going to happen is it's going to bait you in. And that's what Gatchers games do. They make you feel responsible and vulnerable to have those units. They try to kind of subconsciously tell you that if you don't have it, you won't be happy. But remind yourself before the patch even hits, guys, that you don't need those units to be happy. Spend modestly. For me, if I play a game, if I spend $50 on a new game and play it for two weeks, I'm pretty happy. Maybe, you know, if the game's really good, sometimes back with, uh, you know, the Pokemon games and the things I really love. I'm happy to spend 80 or 90 for a game I can play for a month to catch all the Pokemons. But this is not a Pokemon game, guys. This is a gacha game. Try to not have all the units because it's almost financially impossible for most of us. Now, if you do find yourself in difficulties and maybe think of spending, I do really recommend coming back to this old video I made. It talked about how to beat the paywall. There's two type of ways the gacha game gets you to spend. Firstly, it's the psychological method. They basically target at ways that promote spending. And after that, there's the progression, the difficulty of the game. So do come back to this one if you haven't seen it. And I talk about how you can kind of mindfully understand those and be aware of it and how you can overcome those in-game difficulties without spending much or without spending at all. To summarize this video, I think it's very important for us to be aware of the timelines and the dates for different things. And you can see coming back here, there's only 20 hours left for the battle pass. And also there's less than 11 hours left for the different tasks that is still remaining. Keep in mind, those do expire quite earlier than the new patch that comes in. And after that, we talk about resources, how to prepare. And finally, we talk about the importance, guys. It's very important for us to not overspend in the game because there will be a massive hype. You see a lot of information and news about it. But keep in mind, guys, prepare yourself before those information hits us because during that time, it's hard for us to make decisions. And we might be swiped away by the hype. And before we know it, we might be spending too much money in the game. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips, and news, and even updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with Catherine and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.